Hi, welcome to Power of the Network. I'm your host, Tim Locker, Vice President of Broadband here at CBM. You know, as many of you know, I started uh, here, I've cut my teeth in the communication industry. And, uh, you know, one of the things I really enjoy about this podcast is getting to learn uh, more about the other markets that we serve and uh, also meeting, uh, you know, with some of the folks that we represent there in that market. So, you know, today uh, we've got Mr. Pat Stepanek. Uh, from Invent Hoffman, uh, even first time meeting him, and I'm looking forward to our conversation. Uh, please join us and follow along. Pat, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time to thanks for having me to be with us. Um, uh, I noticed you've got a pretty pretty diverse background in the industry, uh, many years of service, obviously, um, but you have one of those. Uh, titles that's kind of hard to define business development um you know business development to me is, is kind of looking forward into the future trying to see what's what's coming uh you know what what kind of things are you seeing in the future for hoffman i see more automation coming uh more different uh automation pieces to help out our panel shops whether that's more machines more uh pieces for service that type of thing Mm -hmm. So we're always developing new things, new machines, new pieces and parts to help out our panel shops to automate. So uh, you mentioned you're you're uh, originally from the Steinhauer uh, side of the house, which is uh, a, a company that Hoffman bought. Tell me a little bit about uh, about Steinhauer and why it's relevant. Steinhauer is a German company that just built machines. So our main focus machine was our mod center, which is our machine to cut um, out enclosures and cutouts have branched off into a machine called the NC cut, which is to do DIN and duct rail. And then I'd even branched off into our newest item, which is our PWA personal wiring assistant, which is uh, a way to wire all your panels and, to, and to create all the wires for all your panels. Okay. Um, you know, so we have to probably dumb it down a little bit for me and maybe some of the viewers, uh, you know, I've, I've come out of our communication industry. So, uh, you know, the commercial industrial, some of this stuff is new to me. Uh, when you say mod center, uh, let's talk about what that does. It is, in essence, it's a CNC machine that basically will cut out all your holes and cutouts in your enclosure. So all your modification points. So when you're bringing wires in the bottom of your cabinet or you're doing push buttons on the front of the cabinet for mm -hmm. control, it would do all your cutouts for that. Um, but it's much, much more than just a regular CNC cut machine. Because what it does is not only does it figure out all the cut holes, we also have software enabled in it, which handle all the speed and feed rates for you as well. A standard CNC machine, you have to figure out all the speed and feed rates to, to cut um, on, and this machine does all those calculations for you. Okay. So, it's, so we talk about industrial automation. Mm -hmm. uh, let's lay that out. So it could be a, let's say it's a food processing plant. Mm-hmm. And so they're, what types of things would they be trying to automate in a food food, food processing? processing plant? You're going to have the conveyors that run your uh, food that comes down. You're going to have a packaging piece to it where it actually will make the boxes and do that. You'll have a wrapping piece that may wrap the boxes after it gets done for that. Um, and then you're going to have other pieces where you're going to put your barcodes on. You can scan barcodes. Um, do all pieces of the auto automation so that it spits out at the end the box that your okay. cereal comes in or whatever else would come in. Okay, so uh, so when we talk about the automation, then what Hoffman does is, uh, you know, we provide enclosures uh, where all those electrical and components and controls and all that stuff's going to go. Mm -hmm. um, and so where you come in then is um, the the panel shops, if you will. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me what a panel shop does and why. Uh, why this automation is good for them. So a panel shop does everything from the controller on a machine to even street lights that you might see out there, the boxes. They handle all the different boxes. So everything from a small junction box up to a big box that would control different things. Uh, panel shop makes uh, everything in between. I mean, everything you can think of that has a box in it could, be, could have come from a panel shop. Okay. And so traditionally they would... Uh, so they're gonna they're gonna provide a box to the customer. They're gonna put whatever controls in it they need, mm -hmm. uh, all of that stuff, and they're gonna basically customize that for mm -hmm. the for the end user. Um, and so they will 
they would traditionally then do all this by hand or or yeah typically most shops do all by hand so the cutouts they do they actually have a jigsaw or a cut they're doing it very manually which is very slow process there's also some safety involved with it because you could obviously cut your fingers cut your hands that type of thing when they go through they land all their different panel pieces and then they put their wires in so they're wiring it from point a to point b and they basically build you an entire panel that will run whatever piece of machinery that you might want it to run. Okay, and so does 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 Hoffman um, does Hoffman supply any controls at this point, or is it just just no? The no, Hoffman okay. only supplies the the boxes typically. Okay. Um, we are now starting to branch off. Obviously, we are talking about the machines that build the wires, that do the cutouts and that type of thing. We're also looking at uh, tilt tables, which is actually a table to hold the panel when they're wiring it, stuff like that. So we're branching off into more things like that. We also actually have a new software package, too, to help them design all these panels as well. Okay. Um, so if, if I'm a panel shop, what percentage of my business do you think is – just small, standard, like repetitive business, uh, and what percentage would be like super complicated? Uh, it's usually you know, about usually about a 50-50 mix because okay. you need enough repetitive stuff to pay the bills, and then you work on some of the more you know extravagant stuff. Yeah. Um, usually, is the other fifty percent, depending on the shop. You'll talk to a lot of guys that are, they call it one-offs, but in the reality, nobody's a one-off panel shop. They couldn't make enough money to do that. Yeah. It's all, it's mostly repetitive stuff. Like okay. I said, about 50%. Repetitive. Wherever that, uh, each panel shop kind of has a little niche. Has their own little niche. niche and you have guys they... that are wastewater panel shops. You have guys that are panel shops that handle the conveyor type systems. So they do yeah. a lot of stuff for the Amazons of the world and the Walmarts and, you know, all those type of guys as well. Okay. That makes sense. Um, so describe this, uh, mod center, if you will, how big of a machine is it? How okay. big of a box from small to big? I mean, okay. uh, uh, walk us through what that looks like and feels like. So we have four different sizes of the machines. Basically the width of the machine is the same, but the height of the machine is the difference. Okay. They have doors on the front. When you close the doors, you're actually doing your back panels on the doors. When you open them, you put your enclosures in and cut them. We have a 63-inch tall, we have an 80-inch tall, and we have a 93-inch tall. And that width and height uh, measures how big of a box you can put in it. Okay. Um, obviously, you can put up to a 90-inch box, but a lot of our customers with our big model will do even a giant cabinet, which we call two doors, which these wouldn't fit in this studio, basically, a two-door okay. or a four-door enclosure. Those can go in our larger model um, and be able to cut as well. Now, is there a range? In other words, on that largest model, can you do a tiny box like this too? Absolutely. It'll okay. go down to right, right around four inches. Okay. With a special attachment, you go down to one and two inch boxes. Um, but basically, it's made for more of the bigger boxes, the bigger model. But it just okay. it, it has a full range. What is there an average? Is there a one machine that that? you see more than others? Yeah, I sell the large model in the United States because typically in North America, we're cutting big boxes. And because of the range of it, because if you use the right adapter, it can go down to a one-inch box, it can cut pretty much all your boxes. So it covers everything. Yeah, and that's our 293 model, we call it. Okay, okay, awesome. Um, what, kind of, uh, what kind of production rates does that give the panel shop? Like, it's got a result, obviously, for them to make things faster, make things more profitable. Generally, um, looking at about a 75% reduction in, in labor. It's amazing oh, for wow. the shops. And then the amount of accuracy that the machine provides is also amazing. So this is cut on our machine, and you can see that it makes such a precise cut, it is not even a sharp cut at the end. So you can actually yeah. take a look at that, and it'll make that, that precise of a cut. If you have a, and I didn't bring one, I apologize. If you have a painted door on the front, it will actually it will cut so precisely it won't disturb the paint on the door. It cuts that precisely. So you can paint it ahead of time and then still do your cuts and mm -hmm. not have any issues. It cuts to a tenth of a millimeter accuracy, so it's quite amazing. Okay. So for those guys that have a special run that they're doing a lot of, their mm -hmm. main business model, they can, they can make them 75% faster. Absolutely. They, they can do tremendous there and then still use it on their custom stuff. Awesome. What is the uh, NC cut? So the NC cut is a specialized DIN and duct rail cutter, um, which actually what it does is it does two things. It, it electronically cuts your DIN and duct rail, 
but then it automatically. Okay, so explain that for people that, that don't know. What's a DIN rail? Okay, DIN rail is the rail that you put on the back of the panel. So when the guys wire the panel, they actually have DIN rail that goes inside. The wire runs inside this DIN rail as a protection inside, and it runs to different components. So it okay. runs from a power supply up to uh, something else, yeah. okay? And it runs through this DIN rail. That DIN rail is, is adhered to the back of the panel, where they stick it on or usually screw it in. And then it, the wires run through that DIN rail into their different devices. And then the DIN rail holds uh, power supplies, breakers. Typically, it holds the controls, wiring going to that. those. And then th that is the that is the duct. And then they have the DIN rail was runs along it, which is what everything attaches to. Yeah. So they have DIN rail mounted, power supplies, DIN rail mounted, relays, all that type of thing. All the controls and yep, everything. All else the controls is the are all DIN rail mounted. What our machine does is it actually what a, a big waste in most shops is the fact that they cut the DIN and duct rail off at the wrong measurement. So they kind of wing it. They say, okay, it's 20 inches. Oops, it should have been 22 inches. That piece usually goes in the trash can. There's the waste. Yeah. This machine will take, once you wire it and go through it, it will actually take one job or many jobs and truncate them together to save you all that DIN and duct rail waste. The, the cuts are perfect. They're exact. And it saves you all that DIN and duct waste that you have. Okay, so it's a shop. it's a perfect fit every time. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The power uh, the power wiring assistant or PWA. Uh, walk me through what that does. Okay, your personal wiring assistant. We've well, got three different models, and the PWA two thousand is made to sit next to the operator, and it has all the pieces. that will actually cut the wire. The operator would take it and actually put it into the stripper crimper or the ferrule tool to put a ferrule on the end. Okay. That's a type of connector is a ferrule. And then it actually will print a label that will put the label on for you as well. Okay, right? so it tells you where to and from? To and from. And we have three different models. We have the the 2000, which I call our auto, our, our fairly manual, semi-automatic, to our 5000, which is semi-automatic, which basically does the same labels, to the 6000, which will actually make you even a wiring harness like this. This okay. model also prints right along the wire. So it prints right on the wire. It bundles, prints, um, and then puts the ends on the wire. In essence, makes you a whole wiring harness that you can just take right out and put into your cabinet. I wanted to take a second and explain what is a manufacturer's rep. Uh, you know, it's still funny to me sometimes uh, our role is, is often misunderstood, uh, but... In a nutshell, what a rep does is we are a subcontracted sales force uh, for multiple manufacturers. Um, our, our lines are complementary to each other and not uh, competitive. Uh, and what this does is, you know, it often gives us uh, the opportunity to, to sell a full line solution. So it really brings value to our customer when we can, uh, you know, represent product from one end to the other. Uh, we're not a distributor. Uh, you know, we work with distributors uh, to get our product to market, but we're really an extension of, of those factories. Um, so just in a nutshell, if you're looking for a, a, a great manufacturer rep with uh, years of experience and great folks, uh, look us up at cbmrep.com. So I... You know, obviously that ties in. It obviously seems complicated, you know, all the wiring, where it all goes. Uh, but you've got a software package that mm -hmm. that takes care of that. Tell me what that software package can do. So it's a new software package called DTM, we call it. It's called Design to Manufacturing. And what that does is it gives the operator, the, the owner, the operator, the ability to completely wire his panel, put in all his relays, put in all his pieces and parts, in his cabinet, do it in virtual, and then once you get done with that, you can export that file out, whether you want to do it as a virtual drop-in to show your customer what you're doing. You can take your build of materials and send it to your purchasing place, and then you can take your output and send it to all the machines. So it basically drives your entire, entire panel shop. Okay, so if I've got a big custom cabinet and I need whatever XYZ controls in it, you can put all those details in. Yep. It's going to tell you where to put all the components, how the wiring's going to go. Yep. The it'll, even, it'll even self-wire. So you can actually tell it you want pack fill to go 50% right and 30% left, 
and it will self-wire it. It'll even tell you where it thinks is a good suggestion to put all your wiring inside your panel along with all your stuff. It'll also, it also knows um, specifications on things like power supplies because you have to have certain spacing on them. It knows okay. that, and it will not let you place something close to it. It also knows the gauge of wire, so it will not let you put the wrong gauge of wire with the right with the right piece because it won't allow that. It knows it should be 10 gauge or 8 gauge, and that's the only thing it's going to let you do. Okay, so when I'm done with this whole thing, I've got it designed. Um, I'm going to put the box into the mod center. We're going to cut it all. Uh, we're going to go to the wiring assistant. It's going to make all the cables for you. Mm -hmm. How much of this is still manual then? What What parts are left uh, for the technician to Well, to you make still have box. to land the wire in the cabinet. Okay. Um, now, the direct to manufacturing software also has a smart wiring piece to it, which we have another machine called the SWT3000, which actually is a smart rack. That smart rack, you can hang your wires, and then it will actually teach your operator where to land it in the, in the, in the cabinet. So it'll keep you from getting wires crossed. Or yep, whatever. so now you don't have to have a necessarily super smart operator doing it which is also another big issue in the shops too, because they have legacy people that can only wire these cabinets. That takes it out of that because everybody can wire every cabinet. Yeah. So what's your, what's your target customer? I mean, why, why would somebody not have one of these in their shop? Typically our target customer is, of course, we talk about panel shops, but we also uh, call on OEMs. Um, there's a lot of OEMs that have their own panel shops and then they do their own panels. We also have integrators. Now, an integrator is a guy that will take the panel shop stuff and actually land it. So he can actually do robotics with it. So he's the guy that will go into General Motors and put the robots in. So there's usually three different designations of okay. guys that we can sell. Typically, most guys have the panel shop and the piece in there, or they're doing enough panels to make it worth their while, basically. Okay. So what's your, uh, what's your elevator pitch, I guess? For the... Uh, yeah, if you're if you're going into an integrator or one of those types, of, you know, what's your what's your pitch? Is there competition in the market for this? Is there? Yeah, other? yeah. Weirdly, there's one competitor on. Well, it depends on which which piece you've got. You've got on the mod center. There's really only one other competitor. Same with the NC cut. When you get into the wire machine, there's six or eight different competitors. Okay. Um, I would say the elevator pitch is you know. Do you want to save on labor or, you know, save that thing? Um, most customers have an issue hiring people now. They not only cannot find people, but the people they, f they find cannot do what they used to do, say, 10 years ago. Yeah. When it comes to the wiring and that piece to it. So they need to have these pieces and parts together. And it really, it gives the control back to the owner and the product managers in each of these panel shops. Because you do not have to rely on certain people and people that you cannot find, it replaces a lot of that labor. Okay. So what, how many errors do you think doing it manually? Uh, I, you know, you got to assume people are plugging wires in the wrong places or, or maybe not building things to spec. Uh, you know, do you see a high percentage of errors in, oh, it's in a, a manual? It's amazing. When you do this manually, you have guys taping it off and doing it. For the mod center, you have, you have a, my joke is I walk into a shop and say, where's your waste area? And they always have a set of cabinets over here that they've ruined because they sure. cut the wrong hole or they put the wrong piece on it. When you go into the wiring side of it, that's amazing too. You have this bin of wires that's usually a table that's, you know, a, a box that's bigger than this table that is full of wires. And that waste is, is a machine in yeah. six months to a year, basically. Okay. The NC Cut, they have, a, they have a, uh, a bin underneath it where they have three or four bins. The worst guy I ever saw had a whole dumpster full of the duct rail. <laughs> yeah. A distributor cutting it for his customer. So cutting yeah. it. Whoops, that's wrong. Throw it in the dumpster. Yeah. So. Yeah. And uh, even if it's nickels at a time, it still adds up over. Oh, yeah. Over yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd, you'd mentioned, uh, you know, the work shortage. I think that affects every every industry, not, not just yours. But, uh, uh, you know, even since COVID, uh, that seems to be a, a, a pattern, you know, mm -hmm. a shortage of, of people. Um, you know, what, what can your mod center do for, uh, for somebody in terms of an employee like that? Well, we've got, um, with the software, I've got a customer that actually has all of our machines along with the software. And he was able, he stated to me that typically to train one of his employees took around two years to train them. Um, after he got the software, he was able to make this guy basically dangerous, basically starting to wire a panel after two weeks. 
So you oh, can see incredible. there's a usually yeah. a huge, huge um, big increase for that. In, yeah. Big increase for that. Big increase in the learning curve, and, and you know, uh, you know, if people people don't seem to have the same longevity uh, as they used to. You know, used back in the day, you know, you go to work for the same factory for forty years and retire, and that's what you did. But it seems like people, you know, certainly bounce around a lot more uh, now. So increasing that learning curve is is incredible. So there's also a thing with legacy employees that can. I hate to say this, but can hold the ownership ransom because they're the only guy that knows how to wire that panel. Yeah. And when you take that software and bring it into this thing and give them the ability to be able to look on the software, and anybody can do it, that guy can't hold you for ransom anymore inside that yeah. shop. No, that's a great point. Yep, for sure. So industrial automation is kind of a buzzword. You know, mm -hmm. we, we hear a lot about that now. Um, what role does AI play in automation? Uh, you know, AI really hasn't factored that far into it yet, um, but we are, you know, going towards it. Right now, you know, that's what somebody always always asks me, you know, at different places. They say, well, you know, you're replacing people, but these people don't exist. The, the labor force is just not there for yeah. these people. And then what a lot of guys do is they branch off and they become the programmer for that, or they become the guy that does that part of it. Yeah, there's still positions that are needed it just changed the role change yeah and like i said they can't find that and there's also a lack of labor where people want to do all the manual stuff so that becomes the next the next phase you yeah. know you know i think it's kind of funny because actually you know what you're doing is you're providing automation to the guys that are providing automation mm -hmm. <laughs> you know frankly uh you know and with your software uh it's obviously uh industry leading you know and very tech forward software um so I think that's pretty awesome. But you'd mentioned something about uh, uh, using virtual reality too. Can you talk more about that? Yeah, with our with our rack that we we have, we have the ability for to be able to help the guys land wires. One of our customers actually extended it to a VR set of goggles, and instead of his guys looking at still basically a digital schematic, they're they just have it in their screen and they can just go right to wiring. So it's kind of a, you know, so just virtual lead, reality. So leads them where to plug it in. Yeah, and it works right into what everybody's going to now because people, I guess, want to play video games. We're not <laughs> playing video games at work, right? So Yeah, why not? It's all right? good. It's why all not? good. Yeah. Yeah. What's your favorite game? What's my favorite game? Yeah. Uh, I don't have a favorite game. <laughs> I kind of wondered. That's why. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> hockey. You mentioned you play hockey. Yeah, I'm a hockey player. So, Beer leaguer. Yeah. Beer league Old hockey. Old man hockey, yeah. Well, that's far ahead of me. I, I don't think I could even get on the ice without wiping out so you have to learn that at a young age don't you yeah yeah i started skating when i was nine but yeah born and raised in michigan no born and raised in indiana indiana okay indiana moved to michigan gosh 16 years ago okay so okay so you played all the way through school did you play any college or i played just... very little college yeah i played a little bit for uh yeah college team but okay mainly it was high school high school okay yeah yeah we didn't we didn't have uh we didn't have high school hockey uh, where I was from, thank goodness. But uh, <laughs> it's an, it's another breed. So how long have you been with Hoffman now? Three years. Three years. Okay. And you've you've been with a rep in the past. Yeah, I had my own rep agency before this. Okay. Uh, and then before that, I worked in several different uh, business development manager uh, themes. Okay. Mostly for German companies. So that's kind of my forte. Okay. So, okay. Did you have uh, any mentors or who, who paved the way for you? Absolutely. There was just a bunch of different guys. I too many to mention. Um, but yeah, a lot of different people that have taught me different things in automation. Okay. Absolutely. Is there someone that uh, you're paying that favor back to now? Somebody under your wing? Yeah, or? kind of the younger generation. Um, my forte, what I love to do is we work a lot with reps like you guys. Yeah. And there's always younger reps and different guys that, that work towards that. And, yeah, I'm always working with young, old, everybody to get them up to speed on the automation side. So Awesome. Well, we I know our team enjoys working with you, and we're grateful to, to have you in this week. So Thank you. Thanks again. But what would you say is one assumption that, that people make about your job that you would disagree with? People make about my job. Probably what we talked about earlier, that we're replacing people. And like I said, I don't think they're the people exist. Um, and, you know, that would probably be the, the number one assumption. 
Because if I talk to somebody, more of the lay people that don't know what I do, that's what their 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 whole thought is that yeah. oh you're replacing people with oh your now machines. there's a robot and now there's a robot a to do it there, yeah. um, but like I said that I don't know where everybody went after COVID but they all disappeared so <laughs> they're not there and yeah. that seems to be a common theme in every panel shop well OEM just all the way across the board yeah so yeah we see it in every industry that we uh, that we support we we see that theme for sure so. Well, awesome, Pat. Uh, thanks again for taking the time to be with us today. Thanks uh, for having me. You know, Appreciate in, it. Invent Hoffman is a great line for us, and we're proud to represent it in, in so many ways. And uh, we can't say enough about you know the great things that you guys do, and and you know, we just really appreciate your support. So thank you so much. Yep. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks again for joining us today on Power of the Network. Uh, it was great to have an opportunity to get to know Pat a little bit better, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed that as well. Uh, if you like what we're doing here, uh, please like, share, subscribe. Uh, give us your comments. We'd like to hear your feedback. And if you need any uh, representation from a great sales force like ours, uh, give us a look at www.cbmrep.com. Until next time, thanks for joining us on Power of the Network.